On the programme, our Director General from Irish Aid was supposed to be here tonight, Michael Gaffey, and he sends his sincere apologies. And um, I'm the very fortunate one who got to give the opening remarks and act as MC. And I say that um, wholeheartedly. Often many people who get landed with a job when their boss can't be here um, do it reluctantly. But I'm quite the opposite. I'm doing it with um, extreme enthusiasm, as I was one of the founding members for uh, Father Michael's lecture series. Um, we started, as, as Leo indicated, 11 years ago in 2006 was the very first lecture um, that we held or that we organised in, in Father Michael Kelly's name. And it was um, a really important event for us, um, in particular to acknowledge the work of Father Michael. I mean, many in this room know him, know of his work, have met him and know the enthusiasm, the inspiration um, that he repeatedly brings to bear and the intellectual capacity that he repeatedly brings to bear in addressing HIV. So I'm very honoured to act as MC and, and to, to give the opening um, remarks tonight. And just to, for me to extend um, a very warm welcome to all of you here this evening. As I say, there are many friends around this room that have been here from the very beginning, and I'm seeing colleagues and friends since 2006. I think I've missed one lecture uh, during that period of time, and I know there are many in this room ha who haven't missed any. And the reason I missed that lecture was that I was in Zambia at that particular time and couldn't come home. Um, so I think in Father Michael's name, he brings us all together, those who are working domestically and those who are working internationally. Um, and he really inspires us and motivates us at a time that's really important and really needed in the battle against HIV, where we are seeing a drop off in investment, um, particularly at country level where it's most needed and particularly at community level where it's most needed. And I know that Father Michael speaks from the heart um, about uh, the need for focusing on communities. Um, we have two excellent speakers, as Leo indicated tonight, Sean Mellers and Robbie Lawler. Sean from the International AIDS Alliance um, and Robbie, an Irish HIV activist who has established the first online peer support network in Ireland for people living with HIV. And, and many of us internationally work with peer support networks and it's actually quite um, amazing to think that this is the first one that's actually in Ireland. So well done to Robbie for that, and I know he will speak enthusiastically um, on that issue. And Sean himself, many, many years with the International AIDS Alliance and has done tremendous work currently as Director of Knowledge and Influence. Um, I also acknowledge the presence of the diplomatic community. Um, Ambassador, you're very welcome. And also to say there are some of our retired Irish ambassadors here. Bill is here and Pauline Conway, who I also saw um, here present and who continue to provide a lot of leadership and engagement on this issue. Um, special thanks to the Irish Forum for Global Health who have organised this event with Irish Aid over the past number of years and we really appreciate their support um, and their leadership in, in organising the event for us. Um, and as I said earlier, our thanks also to the Royal College of um, Physicians for hosting us. Um, I think this year's lecture, the 11th in the series, represents a continuation um, of Irish AIDS' long-standing commitment to HIV. I was the senior HIV advisor from 2003 to 2008, and during that time we saw tremendous political leadership here in Ireland in our response to HIV um, internationally, and it was at that time that we began to forge the linkages also with, with what was happening domestically in Ireland on HIV. HIV. And we've continued that very long-standing commitment over the years to very important issues such as, and these issues you'll hear about tonight, such as stigma and discrimination, which is really a horrendous barrier to progress on addressing HIV. And Father Michael, in 2006, it was the first in the lecture series, was the theme of stigma and discrimination. And it has repeatedly come back through as a key issue and a key theme and a barrier to progress in terms of prevention um, and preventing the spread of HIV. Um, and it disproportionately affects key populations, including sex workers, people who inject drugs, transgender people, prisoners, gay men, and other men who have sex with men, and their sexual partners, 
who in 2015 accounted for 45% of all new um, HIV infections. And they are often the minority communities that are on the periphery and that do not get sufficient attention in terms of access to resources, access to services, um, awareness of available services, and also this whole issue of stigma and discrimination is very ingrained um, in, in these communities. Um, there was UNAIDS released a report this year in 2016. It was called the Prevention Gap Report. And it showed that new infections among adults have stalled and failing to decline for the first time in at least five years. Um, and they're rising in some regions. And we'll hear a bit more about that. I'm sure Sean will talk about that in the context of, of Europe um, and indeed in the context um, of Ireland. Um, and this report also shows that an estimated 1.9 million adults have become infected with HIV um, every year for at least the past five years. And that at a time when we know how to prevent the spread of HIV is completely unacceptable um, in, uh, in this time. Um, and in some countries and regions, infection rates among key populations are extremely high. HIV prevalence among sex workers varies between 50 and 70 percent in several countries in Southern Africa, where Irish Aid is working also. Um, and that incredibly um, high proportion, again, when we know how to prevent um, uh, the spread of HIV and also the services that are required for a lot of these key populations. Um, and as I say, these key populations are pushed to the fringes of society by stigma and the criminalization of same-sex relationships, drug use, and sex work. And we're seeing that in a lot of the countries where we're working. And it's incredibly difficult to actually uh, intervene um, in, on these issues. And a lot of our ambassadors and our um, colleagues working in the area of development are using quiet diplomacy and soft diplomacy to try and raise some of these um, human rights issues um, with the countries in which we're um, operating. Um, Marginalisation in many circumstances limits access to effective HIV services and there's an urgent need to ensure that key populations are fully included in the AIDS responses and that services are made available to them. Um, we also feel that much more also needs to be done to promote gender transformative prevention programs. And we've again, throughout the series of lectures, the issue of um, the, the burden that women face, um, not only often um, having a greater proportion of women who get infected, but also in terms of the burden of care for those who are affected by HIV. And again, in 2015, we saw that nearly 400,000 adolescent girls and young women aged 10 to 24 became newly infected with HIV globally. And again, the vast majority have lived or are living in um, Southern Africa. And in many countries in Africa, young women are more than twice as likely to acquire HIV as their male peers. And again, that's, you know, in this day and age where we have the mechanisms and we know how to prevent and provide support um, to young women and girls in terms of, and Father Michael would be the strongest advocate in terms of access to education. Keep girls in school, keep girls in school, keep girls in school. And that is one of the most effective prevention um, mechanisms. And then while our focus in Irish aid is primarily in developing countries, we feel that it is um, extremely important to acknowledge that the rate of HIV infections is, increasingly, is increasing significantly in Ireland and in other uh, European Union um, countries. And today is an excellent opportunity to share our domestic and international experiences in the fight um, to end AIDS. So we're marking World AIDS Day. World AIDS Day is the 1st of December every year. Today is the 5th, but this is our um, opportunity to mark World AIDS Day and we once again express our appreciation to many of our partners present here today, including representatives from religious organisations and in particular I'd like to mention uh, Father John and um, his other Jesuit colleagues who are here from the Jesuit um, community um, and I have always been present, I think, at every lecture uh, for uh, Father Michael or of Father Michaels. Um, there are a lot of NGO colleagues here uh, represented working in this area and the many individuals and groups that have made a remarkable contribution to supporting people living with HIV in Ireland and overseas in our collective aspiration to, to end HIV. 
Um, and I'm going to now just introduce Father Michael's um, video and, and just say a few words about Father Michael. But just before I do, I, just two things I'd like to say. And the first is, on Friday last, I was in Kenya. And on Friday afternoon, um, and I really wanted to bring these two young people into the room. And their names are Emma and Gabrielle. And they're two young peer support um, uh, man and woman who are working with an AIDS <laughs> clinic uh, in Kenya and they are doing tremendous work in really difficult circumstances providing peer support to young men and women um, in university but also and particularly challenging in the slums around uh, Nairobi and I just we had a very good discussion with them they're doing fantastic work and I just wanted to mention that today and bring them into the room with us and secondly, just to say that although Father Michael can't be here physically, um, he is so much with us here in spirit. Um, he has a very strong representation of his family here, and I'd like to acknowledge them tonight and really welcome them um, very warmly. And uh, I know that um, Michael's sister, Una, passed away recently, and that was a very, very sad um, occasion and particularly for Michael as he was unable to travel home for her funeral and Una know that was very challenging for him. Um, Una also came to many of these lectures and it was always wonderful to see the support and love that Michael had continuously uh, from his family and I know he was very close, very very close to Una. So although he's not here, I know in, in, um, he's here in spirit and through uh, his family representation and we warmly welcome them. Um, when people talk about Father Michael, they, you hear the words inspirational, motivational, um, the warm, warmth and generosity which he brings to bear in his work. He's incredibly humble. I think you are always, in Michael's eyes, the best person in the room. He always makes you feel like a million dollars, that you've done all the work, when in fact he has brought huge intellectual capacity to this area. And as David earlier said when we were talking about him, he always brings a fresh perspective. No matter what issue he's addressing, if, even if it's a theme that was repeated previously and he spoke about, he always brings fresh evidence and a fresh perspective to bear. We know that his um, widely acknowledged contribution is greatly informed by his first-hand experiences of the devastating impact of HIV uh, on the communities with whom he has worked with in Zambia. And we've heard that repeatedly in, in his lectures. Um, and his heart is very much at community and individual level. And he really brings that to bear in all of his, um, uh, his interventions. Um, and for us in Irish Aid and many others who know Father Michael, he represents the core of the fight against stigma and discrimination. Um, he's really incredible uh, lectures over the past 10 years. He has spoken with great passion and eloquence on key issues related to gender, vulnerable and marginalised communities, the role of health workers and educators, and the negative role of stigma. And I think all of you will have a copy of the last 10 lectures that Michael um, delivered. And we prepared them in recognition of a decade of lectures last year. And there's copies, I think, on, on the seats here. And I would encourage everybody to bring more than one copy home and to share them widely because there's such inspiration and such um, wonderful information and direction in those. So in this evening's um, lecture, Michael will relate to his experiences in Africa, but he'll also reflect on the impact of AIDS on communities across the world, including here in Ireland. And a constant theme in all of his lectures, which we'll, he will address once again this evening, is the need to reach out and engage with all communities if we are to be successful in the fight against HIV. Um, and once again, I just wish to express our pride in celebrating the outstanding comp contribution of Father Michael Kelly and his lifetime of achievement. And I think that the fact that this is the 11th lecture bears testimony to that. We set up this lecture for three years and 11 years later, it's still going and we're still filling the room. So it's absolutely fantastic. So over to Father Michael and the really the key message on our lecture today is hands up for HIV prevention, leaving no one behind.